Hello, guys. This is Keith with the Shortness Podcast. Before the episode starts, just want to let you know, starting this Thursday and every Thursday during the football season, we will have a new podcast dropping for download on all streaming apps. It is called the Shortness Podcast. We still like sports. It'll be myself, John, and Dwayne, one of our buddies, as we sit around, talk about the games that are happening on the weekend for college and pro football. We'll give our predictions. And then the following week, of course, we'll come back with our results. Who was right? Who was wrong? Talk about everything that's going on. Again, this will be every Thursday that you'll see this drop. It'll be called the Short Desk Podcast. We still like sports. Please subscribe and download. Thank you. Do you remember the 21st night of snubber? Love was changing the mind of pretenders while chasing the clouds away. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing as we danced in the night. Remember how the stars stole the night away. Ha, 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 body, ha. Say, do you remember, body, ha. Dancing in September, body, ha. Never was a cloudy day. Body, 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 body. My thoughts are with you, holding hands with your heart to see you. Only blue talk in love, remember how we knew love was here to stay. Now December found the love they shared. September, only blue talk in love, remember. The the terrific day. Today. I'm murdering the hits, y'all. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Short Desk Podcast. This is episode 32. 32. You said that, was it a question or was it a statement? It was a question. No, it is 32. Mm. I was a little lost there for a minute. <laughs> lost. I wasn't going to say lost in the sauce because. No right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how's the week been? Magical. Hmm. Anytime I'm on this side of the dirt, it's a great. It was a great week. Mm. Yes, for not being in the dirt. Mm. Mm. <laughs> good, good, good week. I had my COVID vaccination. Congratulations, sir. How does it feel? Um, <laughs> it felt. <laughs> Let me tell you. I did all right on that one, you didn't I? You certainly did. <laughs> you really did. The audience might say otherwise. I don't know. I know, right? They will let you know. <clears throat> I, uh, the second needle hurt worse than the first one. Like, I didn't feel the first needle. The second needle hurt. My arm, it hurt for maybe a day and a half. It was sore. Mm. The first shot, my arm was sore for three days. I had nothing really happen except... I think it was maybe mm, 20 seconds that I got nauseous mm-hmm. out of nowhere. But then I just grabbed the Sprite and I was good. Uh, it was, that was it. So I, I feel okay. I don't okay. feel anything. We did have a scare. We thought my son was <laughs> was Man. COVID, Delta. He came home saying how he felt weird and couldn't smell from football practice and all that stuff. I said, oh, God, no. Please, no. So oh, we did the rapid test, thanks to Mahogany. We went and got the uh, hey. the Binex test from Walgreens. Twenty three ninety nine, by the way. That's it. Yeah. All came back negative, but we still took him to get testing, and he came back negative again. So it was a little scare. He got his first shot on yesterday. Mm-hmm. And he's fine. 
So I, I, I don't, I'm still wearing my mask, but yeah, okay. it's been a very eventful week. Um, question. Mm-hmm. The person who administered the second shot, did they, were they as delicate as the first? No. Shot? Cause very rough. Like the first lady that did it, she was talking to me and I mean, well, she was just a nice little girl, you know? Um, I don't know if she's a little girl, but she looked younger yeah, than me. Right. And she was just nice, you know, and no, oh, it's not going to, the, the second lady, she just went, okay. And boom. I mean, it wasn't even talking. She was like, have a seat there. She was tired. <laughs> Sis was tired and it had been a long day. Mm. Mm. I don't know if it was all that. I'm just going to, I'm trying to make sense of it. I, well, is that the bedside manner? Cause I, I feel like I had the same treatment for the second one. Yeah. Maybe. Exact same treatment. I'm gonna check it out for when Isaac gets his second one to see if that's what happened. That lady she gave, could have been intimidated. She gave by no it. F's. I, no. She left my door open for all what? to see. Really? Yeah. Wow. She gave no F's. And then it seemed like um the first one I I didn't really feel the needle go in. I didn't even know it went in. Second time? Yeah. I, I felt, felt that it. thing went in deep. Yeah, yeah. And then stayed in there. Dee Dee said that hers was opposite. Really? The first one she felt? No, she said I feel a thing. Oh, for for both or nothing? This, really? Hmm. I hmm. think that I think that they just was intimidated by y'all. Man, the first one I did not I did not know that it was over. She told me we're done, and I said you put it in already. She said yeah, and I said wow. The second one I felt that that grandma pinch in church. I hmm. felt it and it hurt. I hadn't felt that pinch in a while, like the grandma pinch. That's what it felt like. The grandma pinch. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, in the church pew, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. After she just gave you a stick experiment, yes, uh, one of them strawberry <laughs> wrap candies, uh, you know, butterscotch or whatever, mm. peppermint, soft mint, mm-hmm. the soft pepper. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I'm good. Christmas, I'm good. Crumble, crumble, okay, crumble. So let's go ahead and get into it now. Let's see what. Oh, so I brought in the sipping and munching. You pass me that bottle, please. What are we sipping on today? Uh, so, like I said, we're doing things different with what we're sipping on, and this is probably like the first time since that nasty ass in Bali wine that we had some liquor in here. Yep, the one you picked. <clears throat> so, you with ABC out, liquor, <laughs> I'm not getting poured out, y'all. Yeah, that was poured out. Yeah, that okay. was horrible. I won't even put that down my. Um, Drain my drain. I'll pour that outside. Man. No, it's gonna get all the bacteria out. Yeah, that's the garbage disposal. Yeah, as nasty <laughs> as that was, it would do that. This is uh, I got, I've got this from ABC Liquor. This is called Bartender's Trading Cerritos Horchata. It is a ready to drink Caribbean rum with real dairy cream, cinnamon, vanilla, and other natural flavors. Mm, okay. Uh, you can also make a martini out of this by adding one ounce vodka, shake with ice, and strain into a glass. But we ain't got no, well, I do, no, I don't think we have vodka, no. But we ain't doing all that. Uh, <laughs> we just going to pour this up. And we, for munching, did something a little different. We went to a place called Crumble Cookies, if you remember our cookie countdown. I think that was episode 30. Uh, we, I talked about them being one of my top 10 cookies. So went there to get us some cookies to munch on for today. And, um, sound like it's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> the cookie flavors that we have, there you go, are the cinnamon, I'm sorry, the oatmeal, no raisin, thank the Lord. Uh, I see you mahogany. No raisin. Um, then <laughs> what did you call raisins? Wait, the devil's chocolate chip. <laughs> the devil's chocolate chip. <laughs> uh, um, oh man! And then we have uh, a pumpkin one, and then a cosmic brownie looks just like the little Debbie cosmic brownie, but in a cookie form, and then a regular sugar cookie with the chocolate. Um glaze the chocolate glaze and the little rainbow chip bits okay. or whatever all right here it is put it in the middle so y'all can all grab let's go ahead and toast 
And salute. Yes. And um let's try this. Like this smells like oh. um Oh man. This is dangerous. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's dangerous and good. Mm. Glad I ate. God. Mm-hmm. It's got a kick to it. It tastes like the milk after cinnamon toast crunch. It does, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> John is taking gulps. He's not sipping. <laughs> <laughs> I took too big of a gulp there. Mm. That's why you that did that. That alcohol said, back up now. That's why you did the shimmy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Caught me off guard. Um, while we... <laughs> while we continue to sip it, oh. y'all dig into the cookies. Um... John, you need some water. <laughs> you know what? I forgot. We don't have any water. In this no, it's water. it's I'm okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we may get a leaning. It'll, it'll 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 become interesting. Don't act like Uncle Ernest in here. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Ernest. Ernest. <laughs> oh my God. We Uncle left him Ernest. in Tennessee. Okay. Uncle Nearest. Okay. Today. The closest. But I, I can't make any promises. <laughs> if I start leaning, I'm certain you'll let me know and you'll tell everybody else yes. that I'm leaning. Yes, sir. And I, hopefully it'll be with a boisterous laugh. Well, you've got the cookies, so <clears throat> put something in your system. Don't be afraid of them. Okay. One moment. Uh, Go ahead, Japan. John. Yes, sir. You didn't tell us all you did for your week. Let's talk about it. Um, it was your wife's birthday. This was, and he wouldn't pay you no mind. Happy birthday, baby! And thank you. Yes, happy birthday! And thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. You took her out. Mm-hmm. Nice, enjoyable weekend. Mm. Got you a nice little resort stay. Yeah, you know. Made sure she got pampered, mm-hmm. did everything, yeah. you know, that a good man's supposed to do for their wife, right? Right. You also made some dinner reservations. Mm. Oh, shit. Where did you make the dinner reservations at, John? Del Frisco's. Mm. To which, after uh, the interaction, I have dubbed it a new name. Okay, before we get there. Yeah. <laughs> Del Frisco's is a popular... Steak joint, right? Yes. They also have pasta there, right? I couldn't tell you if it, if they if they did have pasta or not. Okay. Um, we were just there specifically for the for the steak. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm certain they do have a pasta dish. They had some seafood uh, dishes there. Okay. So walk me through that dinner. Okay. That. Occurred as you will get to the new name at the very end, but walk us through that lovely birthday dinner that you had arranged for your wife <laughs> at Del Frisco's. Okay. All right. So mind you, this is my wife's 40th birthday. Mm-hmm. Big four Oh, mm-hmm. um, uh, so I put in a reservation. Normally, when I put in a reservation for a fine dining establishment, uh, they normally state what's the occasion, mm-hmm. um, and you have different choices. So I said birthday, wife's fortieth birthday. I put comments in there. So um, we get dressed up and we take off and travel to Del Frisco's mm-hmm. on International Drive. So we get to Del Frisco's. Um, we pull into the parking lot mm-hmm. and if you are, if you have any type of OCD or anxiety, uh, that parking lot would have been, um, anxiety inducing, mm-hmm. um, will not be going. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're all about balance and what is like a maze or something to get it's in? It's not a maze. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a death trap. When we oh. got there. Del it's, Frisco's it's, is right there by, uh, SeaWorld, right? It's not too far from SeaWorld. Yeah. Right, right down the road. Okay. Yeah. Not too Once far you get off of the 417. Once you get off the four, seven, well, 428, 528, 528, God damn. 528. 528. Yeah. Um, not too far from the Orange County uh, Convention Center. Okay. 
Um, it wasn't too far from the Capitol Grill. I should have just got a reservation at the Capitol Grill. That's okay. The story wouldn't have been the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, I died so that all you could live. Yes. <laughs> yes. So yes, yes. we get to the parking spot, uh, it's the, park, the, the parking area. Mm-hmm. And once again, it's a death trap. There's cars to the right of us. There's mm. like an alleyway. And it's just, mm. it just looks weird. Right. And then there was no order. Um, so the only choice was to get valet, but the valet people weren't there because they were inundated with cars and they were a whole bunch of unattended cars in a line. And then you had people coming in from the international side because we came in through the back way. Okay. You got people coming in through the international side trying to make their way into the uh, the restaurant because it's supposed to be two lanes, but one lane's blocked because there's unattended cars waiting to be parked by the parking attendants. Mm-hmm. So finally a parking attendant is gassed coming yeah. around the corner. Oh no. No, no. <laughs> you guys are here to eat, right? Yeah, yeah, we're we're here to eat. Okay. Just um um, you know, leave the keys in the car, uh, mm-hmm. turn off the ignition, and we'll give you a ticket. Got our ticket. Let my wife out. We go into uh Del Frisco's. Um we get to the uh, the front area where eventually you're going to have um, someone seat you. Mm-hmm. So I went over to uh, the lady behind the counter stating that the Whitaker party is here. Because you had reservations. Correct. Okay. Okay. I see it. Staying off to the side. Okay, cool. So then um, there's a Spanish dude. He's in his suit or whatever. <laughs> and um, he grabs two menus. So that's, I, I assume that was for myself, my wife. Because you got reservations. Right. We got reservations. Mm-hmm. That you commented on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Specifically. Yeah. Commented. Make sure they knew exactly what the occasion was. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. No acknowledgement of that whatsoever at mm. the front desk. But you got reservations. But I got reservations. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, following, you know, me announcing. <laughs> to get that out because I can just imagine you know he the look or just <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I need to put myself on alright so after we check in or whatever you want to call it uh, this um this this family of ger- oh, geriatric Anglo-Saxons uh, walk in fuck uh, John <laughs> alright <laughs> They announced their presence and that they have a reservation. The lady was hunched over. You remember that guy at 300 who <gasps> tipped him off yes. uh, on Thermopylae? Yeah. Um, I forgot his name. Thea- Athiertes, I think is what his name Mm-mm, was. Not doing it, nope. But yeah, she was hunched over. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But um, anywho, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the story. I just thought that was hilarious. Um, Before but, or after we, well, we didn't get to the meat of it. Yeah, we, 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 we haven't got to the meat of it, but it, this is this is definitely a part of it. So the Spanish guy, he grabs the two menus. My wife and I were standing over to the side, <clears throat> close to the threshold to enter into the main restaurant. Mm-hmm. Whitaker, party of two. There's only a party, there's only one party of two, and it's the black folks standing to his left. Mm. He looks over to where all the Anglo-Saxons are. And how many people are over there, the Anglo-Saxons? There's probably about two or three parties Anglo Saxon. Oh, okay. Doesn't even look our direction. He's just looking over there. Cause he just heard Whitaker party too. Mm. So that kind of pissed me off. <laughs> Incident one. All right, let's go. So I raised my hand like Whitaker party's right here, mm-hmm. right next to you. Yeah. Oh, follow me. He didn't think you had reservations. Correct. But you had reservations. Well, he was looking for um, the people with uh, the reservations that he's, nor- he's, he's normally or used to see. Because mm-hmm. he, he saw you come in, he thought yeah. you just was a walk in. He didn't think you right. had reservations. Okay. So, strike one. Well, there's many strikes, but I'm not going to keep going. That was the first one. That was the biggest one. Okay. Of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we finally get to the table. Now, mind you, we d- I didn't realize how huge this place is. 
it didn't even feel like I was in a fine dining establishment. I thought I was in a, as my wife stated, like I feel mm. like I'm in a, a in a buffet because there's so many people. Wow. Mm. So many people. Not what you want to hear on her birthday dinner. No. No. <clears throat> so I'm like, shit. <laughs> this is going to go down real quick, real fast. Mm-hmm. So we take our seats. Um, uh, The gentleman says, hey, you guys drinking wine tonight? It's like, no, we're not going to really drink any wine. So he starts, there was, a, I, I, I guess, uh, plates and glasses for four people. So right now at this point, he's saying all these cheap niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Who takes gold? <laughs> That's the first water. thing that the waiter is saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <sighs> so he picks it up. He removes the additional um, <laughs> cutlery and, and, and glass and, and plates uh, from the table. He figures this is going to be a long night. They're not drinking wine. Go ahead. So <laughs> the glasses that are there have DNA on them. Wow. On wow. my wife's glass, there was clear lipstick on one of the glasses. Whoa. Are you serious? On my glass, there was clear skin residue <laughs> from someone's no. lips. <laughs> Y'all so we we motioned to the waiter like, hey, excuse me. He said, yes, sir. Um, I said, hey, there's DNA on my wife's glass and my glass. Mm-hmm. So he promptly, pick- oh, I'm so sorry, sir. We'll get you some clean ones. Sure. Strike two. So we got picky niggas now. Go ahead. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we get some clean glasses. Mm-hmm. Um, he gives us a few minutes to look over the menu. Mm-hmm. We already have an idea what we want as far as entrees are concerned, but I w- we were looking at. So I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. You know me. Mm. Once I've seen all that, you know what happens at that point, right? Y'all leave. Yes. So what made you stay? Because you had the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that you had made the reservation that, so. but I was looking at it I was I was looking at everything from a, a wide, wider lens mm-hmm. all right it's Saturday night it's after six o'clock uh-huh. how it's a fine establishment though it, am I gonna get another table mm-hmm. someplace else it'd be a little bit of wait but yeah I didn't want to wait okay it was either that or go to BJ's which is right down the street yeah. I probably would have had better service but go ahead period <clears throat> So, <laughs> in hindsight, we were already dressed. Uh-huh. We were hungry. Right. So we stayed. Right. 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 So uh, my wife orders a salad. I order a Caesar salad. Mm-hmm. And then I order an appetizer. They're called Wagyu meatballs. Mm. Sounds expensive. Does sound expensive. Wagyu is expensive. Wagyu is expensive. Yes, yeah. sir. But it is magical. It really is. Um, I don't know where they got this wagyu from. Mm-mm. Um, I, it didn't. They didn't. I've get never heard of wagyu meatballs. Do you really feel like it was wagging. <laughs> like, oh like, man. <laughs> when I hear wagyu, I, I hear two two places: mm-hmm. Australia or Southeast Asia. Yeah. Japan. Japan. Well, actually, three places. Yeah, Japan. When I think about wagyu, mm-hmm. um. I don't know where they got these meatballs from. I've never heard of Wagyu meatballs, so that was a first for me. That, that's supposed to be something that's special. It, that's why I got it. Yeah, I've seen Wagyu. Mm-hmm. It's 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 it looks magical. It's divine. It looks absolutely divine. It melts in your mouth. You gotta go to yeah. I'll tell you where to go. Yeah. So they bring out these Wagyu meatballs mm-hmm. in our salad. Mm-hmm. So I'll just start with the Wagyu meatballs. Okay. When you hear Wagyu, there isn't much you can do to screw up Wagyu. Correct. Unless you overcook it. Here's the thing. It didn't taste like Wagyu. Mm. It tastes like something I can get at um, Golden Corral. So a little Angus, a little, little Chuck. Wow. Chuck. So the cheapest cuts of meat? And no flavor. Bland. Dang, put like no, salt no flavor. No salt, 
no pepper, no oregano, adobo. no Italian uh, adobo, no adobo. <laughs> wow. No onion powder, no garlic powder, um, accent. Dollar stove fresh fries. Wow. Wow. How much were these meatballs? And it had like a weird taste to it. It just, I, I, you know, that's what I was going to ask next. I, I, if the taste was kind of off. It was off. Mm-hmm. I got to get some of this. It's nice. Well, that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could have used this. Go ahead and drink it a little bit, John. Mm. To ease the pain. I mm-hmm. know it hurt. Okay. Sorry for the, allowing this to, to, to run so long, but. I don't know. I have to give you my unfettered opinion. <laughs> well, actually, not even an opinion. It's, it's coming from a place of fact. Um, the Wagyu meatballs were trash. Um. But the fact that uh, we paid for them, I just I just ate them. I just drowned I just drowned them in the sauce because that was the only way I could make it palatable mm. for me or my wife. And we basically, I, I mean, yes, we should have got up from the table and just left. But we just took that as an opportunity to say, "Wow, this place is trash." So we're just going to talk shit the entire night um, about our experience. Mm-hmm. The salads. When you go to a fine dining uh, establishment, you expect that your croutons are not stale. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a 50-50 proposition whenever you picked up a crouton. <laughs> half of them were great. Half of them were stale. So I'm looking online now and I see the Wagyu meatballs, tomato, fondue, shaved, manchego cheese, red fresno, chili, and fresh basil. How much of your light bill? 17 Dollars? Mm-hmm. That For was two. Wagyu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ordered two of them? There were, no, no, no. Two. Two, two meatballs. meatballs? Two meatballs. Oh, oh hell well, no. Okay. Two meatballs. Hell no. Oh, man. I said, oh, they're four ounce meatballs a piece. Four ounces. So eight At ounces least. Of, of, of meatballs. So half a pound. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Go ahead. Mm. I'm off the Wagyu meatball. That, so that was not Wagyu. You, you need so we had right? stale. <laughs> Stale croutons. It is stale point. croutons at this point. Okay. Jeez Louise. Maybe they were giving y'all the magical dining version. Ooh, that is going on That's right now. That's what's going on. That, That's definitely what's yeah. going on right now. Thankfully, they didn't ask me about that. Okay. Then I really would have got up and left. Wow. Yeah, I've had magical wow. dining. It's not that bad. Yeah, but places. has have they have they ever come to you and say, "Hey, you here for the magical dining experience?" Part? No, you have to tell. Okay, them. so I, I would. That's when yeah. I would get up and go. Well, they. I'm, I'm pretty sure that probably crossed his mind after you told him you didn't want any wine. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're having fun with this. One. Oh, man. This is hilarious. Keep going, please. All right. So what did I whack on? The Wagyu meatball. You, you were on the stale, the stale crouton. Crouton. So uh-huh. we 86 the croutons because, once again, we didn't know the next one we pick up was going to be that stale one or the crunchy one. Mm-hmm. So we didn't mess with the croutons. We finished our salads. Those are those are decent. Then the uh the steaks. Oh man, here we go. Wife ordered um eight ounce filet mignon. Mm-hmm. I ordered the twenty two ounce uh bone in ribeye. Twenty two ounce. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's a grown man. But he's he's a grown man. Faction. Faction. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, as he takes another sip, I he have a feeling that this, yeah, you probably need some more. Yeah, he about to bottom that out. That's that's done. I have a feeling <laughs> that this doesn't end too well. Poor dear. I'm so sorry. So, usually, when you go to a fine dining restaurant, take, is that Kobe? Yeah, that <laughs> crying. I'm going right. to have Isaac come get him. Cause. When you go to a fine dining restaurant and they lay your steaks out in front of you, what do you think the, uh, the 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 waiter is prompted to do next after they place the steaks in front of you? Uh, when they place the steaks in front of you, they ask you if there's anything else. I think, right? Not just anything else. What do they ask you to do with the steak? Taste it. See if it's to your liking. Yeah, or cut it. Cut it. Know, make sure that it's cooked to the way that you want it. That some bitch came in as soon as he came in. He took off. 
Did they ask you how you wanted your steak at least? Yeah. Okay. I got the steak how I wanted it, but mm-hmm. it's just, you know, and maybe I'm just nitpicking at this particular point, but once again, it's- You already irritated, so- I'm already everything. irritated, It's but it's been consistent from place to place. Mm-hmm. Any fine dining establishment, waiter would stick around. Hey, I want to make certain that your steak is at the correct temperature that we that, that you asked for. Yeah, the fine dining establishment. Mahogany, can you pass that as I listen to so, him? So, you said, here's your steak. Bye. He just sat it down. Did, sat it, sat well, let me ask you, did he even say, hey, is there anything else that no. you need? No. Took off. That's crazy. That is wild. Then we looked at our steaks. Um, There was tons of cracked pepper on top of the steaks. Hmm. So, they cooked the steak. And then said, hey, we forgot to season it. Let's throw some pepper on this thing right now before we take it out there. But it was too much. Mm-hmm. Too much damn cracked pepper on the steak. My wife could barely, she she had she literally had to scrape the excess cracked pepper on top of her steak. Nah, they would have ate. And then she ate it and she's like, man, I'm having a hard time chewing it because of all this damn pepper mm-hmm. on this steak. Mm-hmm. Me, it didn't bother me too much. Issue I have with my steak was I'm used to whenever I cut it to my ribeye, I, I just cut through the fat. I don't really don't have to do much mm-hmm. uh, with my steak knife. It just runs right through it. Mm-hmm. I had to saw it out as if I was a lumberjack. Mm-hmm. So it was tough? The fat was tough, which really I didn't understand. Deadly. The meat was, Mm-mm. it was tender. But I guess it didn't have that aged flavor that I'm used to. And maybe it was, they said it was a, a prime steak. It didn't say anything about aged steaks. Mm-hmm. And the two, they only had two aged steaks on the whole menu. Okay. Uh, which was a uh, an, another uh, 45 day aged uh, ribeye and then something else. Mm-hmm. I forgot what it was. Mm-hmm. It's really not important at this particular time, but the steaks were, oh, my steak was okay. It wasn't something I would go home and write, write to my mom about. It was just okay. That's unacceptable. The uh, my wife. I mean, we, the only reason we ate it because we were just we were just famished, and you had a reservation. <clears throat> they got no acknowledgement. There was nothing on the table, by the way, as far as acknowledging that it was my wife's fortieth uh, birthday. You, you did specifically put on there. It's a 40th birthday party, the reason for 40th birthday dinner. Correct. The reason for you guys dining with that establishment for that evening. Correct. No acknowledgement of that. Because they ask, why are you dining with us when you make a reservation? Is Correct. A special, special yes. occasion or something. Set yes. Extra moment out of your life to make right. sure that you. Okay. Mm-hmm. You want to set yourself apart from your competitors, but mm-hmm. they didn't do that. that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, on yeah. top of that, when um, <laughs> my wife was scraping off. Mm-mm. The cracked pepper from the from the top of her steak. The waiter came home. She's like, "Hey, is everything okay? Is your steak okay?" My wife's like, "I can't, you know, really, you know, get this steak down because there's so much pepper on it." But my wife, why she refused to have a new one because she said, "I'm just so hungry at this particular point. I know it's going to take you guys forever to bring out a new steak. I'm just going to go ahead and eat that one." You would think at that time that's when you go and bring a manager over mm-hmm. to try to smooth things over. Mm-hmm. It never occurred. Oh, wow. Never occurred. <laughs> so, not their best week crumble cookie for me. Maybe they're overworked and understaffed. I don't. I ain't even. I've been talking about this damn story. I haven't even That's partaked okay. of the uh, crumble. That's okay. It's not my favorite week, but I like more chocolate things. But go ahead. So, oatmeal's pretty good. I agree. I like oatmeal. It's missing the devil's chocolate chips. Oh, my gross. Go ahead. <laughs> so but before you continue, right? So, okay. Mahogany said understaff. I get that. That can happen. People can call out. But that doesn't mean that you should neglect the lack of service that your establishment is should be built on when it's that type of dining. Short staffed or not. You, sp- you spend a good bit of You spend... Yeah. Yeah, you spend a good bit of money. Yeah, you ain't going to Outback. You know what I'm saying? You you spend a big, a nice little that. change. You, you probably would have received better customer service at this point. You could have went to Longhorn for a steak. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And save 66%. So. But you were trying to make it special for your wife. Of course. So you got to that point with the, them saying a, you know, um, is there anything wrong? Your wife said it was just too much. What happened then? Nothing. So they didn't say, Mm-mm. can I? They said, do you want us to bring out another one? My wife refused it because mm-hmm. it took took forever for the state to come out. So, of course, I'm sure they took something off the bill. I told you, no manager came over wow. after my wife um, stated her grievance. No manager came over. Wow. 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 So did you guys have dessert? Oh, no. No, no. No. (laughs) So you got your bill, paid the bill, promptly left. How often did the waiter come by and check on you guys? I probably saw the waiter four times. Was the gratuity automatic? No. Mm. Mm. No, it's not automatic. I know I tip well. I tipped them well. Regardless, I understand people have to eat. The service wasn't bad. The execution on if you only saw him four times, Joe. The execution on the on, on the platters, I was not I was none too thrilled with. So it was more or less the kitchen. The kitchen and the front desk. That too. So, um, to me, they're no longer known as Dell. Frisco's, uh, they shall be aptly named going forward by me. This is just me, Del Fiasco's. So, wow. if you have an opportunity to go to Del Frisco's. And won't. Don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the name again? Del Fiasco. All right. <laughs> You're better off going to Outback or Longhorn. Whew. Okay. Know a couple private chefs next time if you want to. I'm probably going to take you up on that. Trust me. Phenomenal ones. All right. Because I, I have no problem paying. I always pass that place, uh, you know, coming from that area. And I was like, oh, we'll continue to pass it. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do not pass go. Thank Do not you. collect $200. Wow. Straight to hell. Straight to jail. Damn. <laughs> okay. Well, having said that, let's go ahead and jump into <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into our top ten. Oh. Is it top ten or it's five. Top five. Oh, my bad. Wrong one. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that was your choice. Well, I understand. We're just so used. It to is top five because okay. we weren't going to eat ten different sure places wasn't. for. I'm afraid to eat these uh, crumble cookies now. Since why not? Why you took eight gulps of the cinnamon toast crunch? Milk. You better put something in there. the alcoholic cinnamon toast crunch. You know what? It's kicking in too. Oh boy, red and mm. it's just so delicious. All right, top yeah, ten. Buddy. Let's get to it. Top five. I'm sorry. Jeez, I did it again. Top five pancakes. <laughs> you guys voted on this. Um, not wasn't something that I was looking forward to, but hey. What's up with that pumpkin? Got, it's pumpkin. So we got the top five <laughs> pancakes. We went to. What y'all thought about that pumpkin? I didn't Thank think you. about it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, that's okay. <laughs> We went to the top five pancake places, Burger King, McDonald's. This is season one, right? <laughs> no more drink for you because you're cutting up. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just not even going to deal with it. Um, we're going to. We went to the five places to do pancakes, Denny's, IHOP, McDonald's, Burger King, and a place that uh, I don't know if they're all over, but they're pretty big here in Orlando called Kiki's. And so we're going to rank the top five pancakes again. This is voted on from you guys on social media. You follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We put the polls up there in the stories. 
And surprisingly, this is what won. So should have put first watch on this list, too. I, you know, I thought about that way after, but I was like, it's probably too late. But it's okay. Yeah. We'll do the five. So let's start with five. We're going to start off with Miss Mahogany. Miss Mahogany, yeah, don't give me a dirty look. What was your number five? Mm. Burger King. Mm. Woo! I did not even know they made pancakes until y'all said that. Uh huh. Huh? And no. Okay. It's a and no for everything with Burger King these days, right? I mean, y'all go there. I this is I only did this to prove Not y'all go there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's y'all? Wait, the challenges have sent you all there prior <sighs> <Yes>. <laughs> to my joining. Okay. Fuck. So I don't know if I said this right. I went back to Burger King a couple of weeks ago. Where'd because you for what? Um, you know, some episodes ago we did the best chicken sandwiches, right? And, of course, Burger King was at the bottom of the list. I think that's when I went on a little rant about Burger King at the time. You had to eat that back About how horrible. Yeah. So, <laughs> ever since then, at that point, unbeknownst to me, the chicken sandwiches from Burger King had not been released on a national level. Mm-hmm. It was only in select cities, and we were one of the select cities where it was released. Mm-hmm. So, I thought, okay, maybe the taste of these have become better over time because I kept reading raving reviews about the chicken sandwich from Burger King. Mm. And I remember when I had the first chicken sandwich, I was on the phone with John and yeah, it wasn't, I was on the phone with you. Yeah. This is before the challenge, I think. No, it was during the challenge. Was it? Yeah. It was during the challenge. That was the only reason I went to Burger King. Okay. And I thought, okay, I didn't get the spicy sandwich at that time. So Mm. I thought, okay, well, oh shit, I keep hearing, uh oh, it's hitting them. It's hitting them. Because he's drinking it like it's not lit, like, yeah, he's drinking it like it's regular milk or something. Right. Mm -hmm. I took too big of a gulp that time. Uh, That's the fifth time time? you said that. That time? (laughs) The whole time we've been in here. But so (laughs) I went to the place, right? And the. I'm sorry. I said, I'm going to go back and try the spicy chicken sandwich because I keep hearing good things about it. I had some time to kill. I know. I know. I know. But wait. I wanted my money back. So you made a decision to go to Burger King somewhere where you don't like it. Right. To eat, to try a spicy chicken sandwich. Okay, go ahead. Well, they said that. I just kept reading reviews. I said, well, maybe, just maybe. I didn't try the spicy chicken sandwich before. They kept saying this is the best thing that they've had on their menu since the original Whopper. And I said, okay, well, let me try it. And it was total, total, total trash. I'm not surprised. It was disgusting. It was just nasty. I don't see how anyone can find that sandwich edible and appeasing. It was disgusting. Was the chicken seasoned? No. But the batter was? No. Oh. Well, how was it spicy if it wasn't no sauce? I don't know. Was it the sauce on it? No. I remember I didn't... having the spicy chicken sandwich, and I didn't find it spicy at all. There was no sauce there. Well, they have the little mayo thing, I guess, they put on to try to make it spicy. But from my understanding, the batter was supposed to have like some type of spice to it, and then it was supposed to be some glaze. I saw none of that. I taste none of that. So they just basically gave you the original? <clears throat> I don't know what they gave me, but it was trash. They won't be able to give me anything ever again. I can tell you that much, unless it is a challenge like this. So sorry to interrupt, but it made me reflect on what I did a couple of weeks ago with Burger King. So Burger King was your number five. It was definitely my number five. Okay. And if I could have put it at number 50, I would have. Woo. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. I'll go next. My number five was Burger King. Mm. <clears throat> Burger King is just, like I said, only time I've had something pretty edible from Burger King in these last few years, surprisingly, was that milkshake that I had, that cookies and cream milkshake. Could not believe it was good. Uh, my wife was a witness to it. She didn't believe it either, and she tasted and she was like, wow. And I said, wow. That's the only thing. So number five for me, Burger King. What you got, John? Burger King. Woo! Number five. Unanimous. Okay. 
Um, I think our lists are going to be pretty much the same. It may be. Because uh, it's short. It's hard to screw this one up. <laughs> thing about it is I I got my, uh, my uh, three stacks of pancakes and mm-hmm. I picked it up. It was quite rubbery. Mm. Exactly. Plastic even. It was. It was something that I honestly, I, I would have, it would have been cheaper to purchase it at the grocery store. Cause in it, the little frozen box? It was the exact same. The it, it was probably the exact <laughs> same thing. Yep. That's what it was. Yes, that's, the, that's, the, that's the vibe I got. They were so small. Mm-hmm. Yet, um, they left my bowels in question. Oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. John, uh, not the bowels. Not the bowels in question. Was Damn. that the only one? No, uh, yeah, well, no. I, I, well, I'm a lady. I'm not discussing once that again, on air. <laughs> I will say, I know what I put in my pancakes. I don't know what they put in their pancakes. They could have been frostbitten by the time you ate them. That's how I was feeling about mine. I feel like they were old and they were frostbitten, but mm-hmm. I was not going to get another set because I'm like, I'm just tasting this for the sake of ranking them. Yeah. But I knew what it was going to be before I even... I, and I literally, I took three bites because I wasn't going to eat all of it. I took three bites. And I was like, yeah, no. And that last one, mm-mm, it was real frosty, frostbitten-y. I took two like bites. An old, old ass pancake. The original heat yeah. from a microwave is di- different from a re- for residual heat coming from a, a pan or a skillet. It tastes like microwave. It it was microwave. Like the ones mm-hmm. you heat up right before you got to go out of school and you eat them on the way to the bus stop. Wow. Pop them in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. 35, 45 seconds. The syrup was trash. Mm-hmm. I don't even know why. I, I, I can't even categorize that as syrup. Wow. I don't know what that it's was. water with sugar in it. Wow. <laughs> it was there was no maple watery. flavor. Mm-hmm. What was that? No clue. Alkaline syrup? Mm. Alkaline things taste better than that. Sorry, it I was does. You, you're that. right. It does. It they really do. does. It was disgusting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm extra like I the way that I prepare my pancakes like I put the syrup on the bottom of the plate and lay my pancake in it because mm-hmm. I want even distribution right. Mm-hmm. So I lay it on the bottom and I literally like cut it so mm-hmm. that it's in the syrup. That was the biggest mistake with these. Mm. You got to just dip it a little bit. And, mm. The butter couldn't save it. Nothing. I didn't even do the butter. I was like, nah, this is going to make I'm make just telling you, I tried it with the butter and the you butter. You tried everything. Uh, to make it more palatable. And, and, it was and the more I tried, the further away from palatable it became. But we knew palatable. that. We knew, we knew that with, with BK. We knew that. I didn't know that because I've never had the, you know what, never mind. Screw it. I don't even go there. You had to, you had to have an idea that this is going to be just shits. I knew it was going to be the shits. He probably had the shits. He did. That's why he said. I told bowels, you my right? bowels were in question. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't quite in distress. Not um, distress. Mm. Okay. My intestines said, "Why? Wow." Not doing this with you. Damn. Do you hate me that much? Burger King, if you ever listen <laughs> to this small independent. We're never getting a sponsor for Burger King. Ever. Uh, it's okay. we ain't going to eat nothing it's anyway. Okay. <laughs> the small independent slushies. Uh, slushies podcast that is approaching 80,000 downloads, plays as we speak. Um, can we get a hand clap for that? Yeah, we can get some <laughs> hand claps. We can get some. <laughs> We get some fireworks. <laughs> eighty, almost. We almost say eighty, almost. That's absolutely magnificent. Uh, Burger King, please do something with your American menu. I'm hearing that the menu all over the world for Burger King tastes fine. It's just America. Maybe we need to take a drive down to Miami to the headquarters and just knock on the door and say, "Hey, it's waste time." Okay. No. You don't know who's working at the headquarters in Miami. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Never mind. They might be about yeah. the shits. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. That probably be a good idea. Okay. That was number five. I'm trying to be famous. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> what you got for number four, Mahogany? For number four, I have Kiki's. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
Nothing magical about them. Mm. Mm. Absolutely nothing. Okay. I have the same sentiment. However, I had to put something below it because I do not like this place. It would have been my number five if it wasn't for Burger King. Denny's. I don't care for it. What you got for number four, John? I got McDonald's. <laughs> really? Mm. Hmm. Okay. Not much different from. Really? Maybe it's just Haines City as a whole. I was going to say it's your McDonald's. Cause. It's got to be your McDonald's because I'm not going to give it away, but <laughs> it's got to be Haines City, bro. It's got to be. Because that is. Cause hmm. it, I, could, I could deal with, like, I don't eat McDonald's food. Like, I don't. And I did go to McDonald's just for Fries the and nuggets of for me. This. Fish filet. And bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, too. Bacon, nothing. I don't understand. Um. <laughs> So I don't I don't go there. Hmm. John is sitting there reflecting like but maybe this is my city. <laughs> it's his city and the horchata. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So yeah, I went just for th- this purpose and I was like, okay, maybe they knew some the pancake gods were with me. Yeah. That day. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, number four for John was they were not with me that day. Okay. They are never with you, John. Never, ever. Okay. And I love pancakes. And I don't. How hard is it to? I'm not a big pancake person. I am not, but you go waffle me to death. You could French toast me to death. We got a Belgian waffle maker at the house. Really? The big ones. Oh, man. The real thick ones. Yeah. We had one. I don't know what happened to it, but. It's in there. Somewhere. 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 All right, John. (laughs) Number four. Hey, it's your list. Hey. What you got for number three, Mahogany? McDonald's. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Number three for me, Kiki's. I what? If, you have to think of where I live when you talk about Kiki's and who cooking. Mm, that may be the issue. That, that's probably that. Like literally, a maybe I can walk to the Kiki's in about twelve minutes from the house. Maybe that's the issue because I hear so many of us saying good things about Kiki's, and I have yet to experience it. So maybe it's the Kiki's I've been going to. I, it, it it could be, it could be, but I'm mean, I'm not a pancake fan anyway. Well, but yeah. Aside from pancakes, like I wasn't that impressed the first couple of times I went for other things. I don't get pancakes. Any of the omelets? I wasn't impressed. I, it was okay, but I just oh thought, my. you know, hey, they go give you big portions. Go to the one in Okoy. Okay, that's what I'll do. So Kiki's is number three for me. What you got, John? Number three, Denny's. Mm-hmm. Denny's is number three for me. We spent plenty of Friday evenings, early Saturday mornings at Denny's growing up as kids, didn't we, John? Yeah, but um, I never, when we were younger, I didn't get the I, the breakfast. We didn't do breakfast. No. No. Uh-uh. It, was, it normally ended up with, you know, appetizer or a sampler mm-hmm. or a, a burger or something. Yeah. <clears throat> But as I got older, it doesn't matter what time of the day I go. I, I just get breakfast. Mm-hmm. And um, pancakes is usually a part of the breakfast. So. Okay. So that's that's my number three. All right. Mahogany, what you got for number two? Denny's. All right. Hmm. It's all about location. All right. I've been to all of them, and I just can't get into them. You been to the one on Sand Lake, too? Mm-hmm. Mm. I just can't get into it. When was the last I'm one? just not a fan of Denny's. I just don't like Denny's. I don't know why. I just don't <laughs> like Denny's I just, at all. I don't know if it has anything to do with, like I said, every Friday night after a football game when we were in high school, we went to Denny's. And I didn't eat the, the breakfast, but <clears throat> I just have a disdain for Denny's. I don't know why. I just don't like this. period every day. Really? <laughs> my senior year every day in high school and went um, with a friend who has since transitioned. Um, mm. We went to Denny's and had the best breakfasts ever. Really? It was so good. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just have a bad taste in my mouth about Denny's. And you could, depending on what you order. And I've had a, a variety of things. My wife and my son love Denny's, but hmm. not a fan. Uh, number two for me, McDonald's. Mm, okay. I just, I'm not a big pancake fan and I don't 
normally order the pancakes from McDonald's, but when my wife has and she can only eat like one or two, one and a half. That's it. I'd say, oh, yeah, I'll take the rest of them. Oh, my God. It is, as you like to say, magical. magical. <laughs> like, you don't, yeah, y'all don't understand. Like, like it's going to sound real gluttonous, and I can't even apologize for it. But, like, I literally, like, may drop a couple tears when food is super good. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're good. They're they're refreshed to me. But not pancakes. Just pancakes ain't a thing. We did but this when I eat that listeners that pancake, it was like wow. Okay. No, like I said, I never order it. Like anytime the, the rare occasion that I have had McDonald's breakfast, I've never said, "Oh, I'm going to order the hot cakes because that's what they call them, hot cakes." Mm-hmm. Never. But my wife will, and the hot cakes and sausage. Yeah, yeah. I will also say about McDonald's. Um, Tell me the, f- I almost cuss. Tell me the price while I'm at the uh, the talking box. Every time I go over there, <laughs> they never pull up to the freaking first window. F- pull up to the first window, please. They say, "Hey, you been? We've been here about a hundred years. You should know the price." <laughs> Man, they don't tell the price. It is quite annoying. And the the, the pancakes were like five bucks for three of them. Was it? You didn't get sausage or nothing? No. Oh. You definitely yes, you're Hayes City because mine is, uh, like I think, three ninety nine dollars or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> three ninety nine, and you get sausage with it. I think egg. No eggs. What? You can get the whole breakfast. I just for got like the bre- five breakfast five ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. I got naked pancakes. It's the Hayes naked. City. Naked. Mm. Pancakes. I wouldn't go to Hayes City uh McDonald's again. I guess it's just a franchise. Y'all bought your house because that's a bad location. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> And refinance too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. You ain't going um, nowhere. So maybe it's Hayden City. Yeah, probably. I might have to go to Winter Haven or Auburndale. Somewhere no, you close. You need to get some before you leave this side. Cause <laughs> this is yeah, we got one down that road down there. Tried. Well, we, we they don't do breakfast all day. Well, so. We headed back into the office uh, they... soon. So. Oh, wow. That's fun times. Mm. Mm, okay. What's your number two, John? <laughs> Uh, Kiki's is my number two. Okay. Uh, always like Kiki's. Mm-hmm. My daughter loves Kiki's because mm-hmm. it's, it's named after her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kiki. And uh, I just like the voluminous portion of pancakes and side of bacon. Everything is super size. Yes. And Kiki. Yes, it is. Don't know how they make those uh, pancakes 250 calories. That might be a typo, a piece. Maybe they don't use that many, that much ingredients. They stretch and stuff. No, they stretch. Yeah. The water stretches. Because if you go to First Watch, it's two pancakes. It's uh, automatically at least 900 calories. Mm. Yeah, but they're using all the whole milk, all the eggs. They cracking them themselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I've always wondered that. Like, well, how are these just five hundred and twenty-five calories for two? Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. But that's my number two. Yeah, but first watch out to get you a heart attack because they got so much girth. But it's so thinking. delicious. Do you know I've never been the first watch? Me either. Okay. Like never. Ever. My wife has. About a job. Yeah, no. That's it all the time. We got I got one right up, down the road from me. Yeah, no. Never had them. Yeah. I heard they're pretty good. I mean, I they're multi grain. They're multi grain pancakes, so they're Is the grain in the pancakes? You won't tell. You can't. Oh, okay, cuz I don't. You can't tell. Grain in my pancakes if I have to eat it. It's delicious. Okay. So why 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 you don't like first watch? Uh I've never been there. Yeah, but the face tells me that you're never going to go talk just, to me. I, I I don't know. I've never even looked at the menu. It just look okay. Let me tell you the the issue that I have. It, you know how sometimes you see a crowd of people in a space and you're like, oh, it must really be good because they're there. Mm. And then every time you pass, like I've never been tempted to, you know, I look at the people that walk in the first. I lives, know what you're saying. And yes. be like, nah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I f- so I'll tell you what. It's funny you say that because I felt the same way. Mm. I see the crowd of people going in and I said, this ain't good. But everyone that I've talked to that is in my demographic mm-hmm. has told me very good things about that place. My trustworthy source. So I'm not trustworthy? You know who they are. Mm-hmm. Who has a very particular palate. 
did not enjoy their breakfast. Really? That's all it took. Okay. I, see, I've I've heard John's hear, like the the, it's, the tenth person I've heard say that it was good. So I'm guess, just like, I, but you I'm guys don't like go. pancakes and stuff like that. No, 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 no. I like I love breakfast. I will eat breakfast any time of the day. Mm-hmm. So I would. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. The other people, people. What time oh, they open? Because you got to be there when they open. Yeah, because I think they close at like two thirty, two or something. They open um, up at seven. The other people that have gone, they don't always eat pancakes, and they said it was good. Okay. But you know, the hood have the best pancakes, Judy's. Mm-hmm. Mm. What? <laughs> and they cut them up for you. <laughs> Let me ask you something. How do you guys feel about Cracker Barrel pancakes? Mm. Come on with it. Mm-mm. I don't really like Cracker Barrel food. Mm-hmm. But the pancakes. I don't like any of the no. They're decent. Mm-mm. I I'm uh, no. Mm. I understand you get tra- you get feel like you getting put back in time. As if you just got off the Cracker cotton fields. Like slavery. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Like working the grave shit. Yeah. And okay. No, but all in all, like I mean, I used to like it. My family used to go there a lot. Like mm-hmm. in my teen and late teen years, like when we went on family trips and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it was it was cool. But then it's like the quality of things disintegrates over time, mm-hmm. and I think that that's what has happened. Um, and then like I just. The last, I can't tell you the last time I had their breakfast. Because you feel like after you go in and eat, they're going to make you go back out and pick cotton. They ain't making me do nothing. They're going to have to whip me. Um, but That comes with the territory? Yeah. It's, just, <laughs> it's definitely going to be, be a problem. But I'm just saying, let me not joke about slavery. I apologize. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just not like now with... <laughs> I'm oh. glad the bottle is empty. Oh. <laughs> I ain't made shit. Uh. I wish I could buy me a spaceship and fly you. Heaven up. knows. <laughs> Past the sky. Heaven knows. Oh. Heaven knows. Oh. 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 I want to fly. No more liquor. I want to fly. <laughs> no more liquor. I said I want a cherry at the pimp. What is the percentage? Oh, no. Yes. I mean, it ain't as good as Coquito, but it's getting hot up in here. <clears throat> huh? Yeah. Oh, she Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican. Yeah. yeah. Born Puerto Rico. That's her first language, you know. She didn't. Le- she learned English watching. Um, it was a cartoon and Family Matters. I think that's how she learned English. Wow. What yeah. was the cartoon? I can't remember the cartoon. She'll tell you. Okay. I think it was Family Matters. Was it Martin? No, Family Matters. I'll ask her when we get there. Yeah. All right. Number one, mahogany. I hop. Is there a certain, is it just a regular pancakes? I don't get special stuff on my pancakes, only waffles. Okay. So, yes, just a regular pancake. It had the perfect crisp on the outside, Ooh. the nice little softness on the inside. Ooh. It was cooked all the way through. Ooh. Both sides were evenly browned. Ooh. I appreciate them. Ooh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Mm. I hop for me. It's number one. And I don't normally put anything on pancakes or nothing, but I tried the Tres Leche pancakes. I knew he was going to do something like that. <laughs> and oh my God, they were so good. It was so good. Oh my God, it was so good. Oh, you <gasps> made that from your skin. Yes, it was so good. It was in your ministry. It, it was. And I tell you what, I don't like pancakes, but I'll order those every day if I had to. Mm. They are that good. The Tres Leche pop, no. uh, pancakes. I'm telling you. Give me a stroke. Nope. <sighs> and they're not that bad. I, I looked up everything for them. And they're really not as bad as chocolate chip pancakes. Mm. Like, seriously. It was so good. Oh, it was so good. IHOP. The International House of Pancakes. The original. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> he's done. It's nothing else in there. Nothing. Now. We're done. Uh, that was my number one uh, I didn't try the plantation house of pancakes when I went to Myrtle Beach that time so um, I can't compare but I ain't gonna laugh <laughs> so IHOP is my number one John what is your number one as Mahogany doesn't choke IHOP mm. they're very consistent 
Doesn't matter which one I go to. <sighs> I, a, I never have worries when I go to. Iowa. Never. Never have worries. Mm-mm. You like, know, whatever you're going to go in there and get, you're going to get a great. You're going to get a damn good pick. Yeah. <laughs> Do you use a regular syrup or do you like to experiment with the blueberry, I, strawberry? Uh, no, just, just give me regular syrup. Okay. I like the experiment from syrup. time to time. You're clearly adventurous when it comes to pancakes. Sometimes, yeah. Tres leches. Because I don't like it. Did you did you put syrup on the tres leches? I did. Which one? The regular. But I did, no. Yeah, so I've had it more than one time. Of course. The first time I did regular. The second time I did, I want to say, was it the strawberry? Either way, it all tastes good, but... You know, I've never, not ever in all my life tried anything outside of the regular syrup. But Try the strawberry or blueberry. That's something good. I have. Just a little bit. Smidge. Yeah, that's it. It'll change your life. I, I'll tell you one thing. I don't mean to cut you off, John, but one thing I don't like about the IHOP now, as with everything that happens now, back in the day, that syrup used to be warm. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, John. <laughs> wow. Wow. Talk to me. Ooh. I'd forgotten all about you. Yeah, they used to be warm on the table. All the time. It was like they just freshly poured it in. Yeah, and the uh, the uh, the tin. Yes. God. Now they're not. Nobody does uh, no. warm syrup anymore. Nobody does anything like they used to, Burger King. See what you did there. Mm-hmm. I think that these people are just letting us know to stay our asses at home and cook. Y'all got wives. If they cook, great. We know your wife going to cook. I don't know <sighs> sis yet, but met her. Wonderful lady. She can probably troll down a little bit. And She ain't cooking no breakfast, though. I'm, I'm cooking breakfast. Okay, we'll do it. She can cook <laughs> breakfast, but she don't cook my breakfast. You know, for somebody that doesn't eat grits, my wife can throw down some grits for me. She makes them the best I've ever had in my life. (laughs) And I'm very particular about my grits. Very particular because I am a Southern man. And grits is a part of my breakfast no matter what. No sugar, right? That's why I do. What? What is sugar? That's for oatmeal. (laughs) Cream of wheat. (laughs) Oh, Exactly. Not not grits. I am very particular about my grits. (laughs) That's why I don't eat pancakes, really, because grits is what that's my starch for my breakfast. So I'm very particular about my grits. It ain't nothing else and in that cup. It really isn't. He's been trying to sip it for the last three, four sips and it's been gone eight <laughs> sips ago. Um a gulps ago. <laughs> Listen. She makes some <laughs> fire ass grits. She put cheese in them? Yes. Mm. The way she does it is just uh, she made it for my birthday one year. She's like, um she followed a recipe. It's some lady some I forgot the lady's name um, online. Not Tabitha. It ain't Miss Tabitha. It's no, it's Tabitha not her. It's somebody else. Her grits. <laughs> I know she don't. She don't put nothing. Don't she? Do she? she is vegan. Yeah, I love her. Tabitha Brown. Miss lo- Tabitha Brown. She don't do cheese. Yeah, she's vegan. Uh, okay. Vegan. vegan. Like uh-uh. she is the like. You put vegan cheese in my grits. We're gonna divorce. Well, you don't have a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I think she may try that though. I think she may try the whole lifestyle of vegan. I can't uh, help her. I'm really don't help her, please, that. because I nah, we gotta help. Don't this. want that cook on my stove or grill or anything. Because she you asked just, me. To what did you say this morning? You just pay the bills, right? <sighs> oh, okay. Live here, right? Just, I just, just live here, pay the bills. Here. That's it. That's so, it. So stay in your place. I am. I, okay. I just don't want to mm-hmm. taste that stuff. But you don't have to. You could not eat. Mm. <laughs> then, so that's where forcing us to go to Burger King comes in. <laughs> oh, no, no. Burger King, get your shit together. I really miss that good ass flame broil whopper that came straight off that grill. <laughs> I almost say <laughs> the big back. <laughs> you know what pissed me off? They make those uh, commercial with the flame broil mm-hmm. on grill on it. Mm-hmm. Knowing damn well none of their kitchens have that flame bar grill. They don't have it anymore. They don't even attempt to uh, mask the smell of it not being there. Like at one point, even after they took them out, they still would have that smell of the grill going coming out of the Burger King. Not anymore. Not anymore. They just say f it. You know, we don't have it. <laughs> You're not going. It's coming out the microwave. You good? We'll put the little grill marks on it. You good? I guess they chemically engineered it to have. I just don't want to eat anywhere where you can get 10 chicken sticks for $2. A dollar? 
A dollar, two dollars, a dollar ninety nine, fifty or something like that. I don't know. I don't eat it. Dollar forty nine. Not doing it. I don't eat it either. Like what? What chicken? I know you don't. I know you don't. What chicken? <sighs> what? That's it's not chicken. for the chickens. It's 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 a meat. It's a four meat slurry. I'm gonna tell y'all something. <laughs> That's not chicken. I don't he know. He said what the, a four meat slurry. Listen. Is that like a one thing? I'm a, I'm gonna let y'all in on something. What? Whenever I drink liquor and drink a whole cup of it, makes me sleepy. Me too. I'm so I'm just, I'm just like yawning. Like, the shit. Your eyes glassy. My yeah. eyes glassy. Like I'm gonna we have gonna to get. It. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get. We gotta get to, to season drink. two. <laughs> Joe's like sleepy. What? I'm looking for more. You should see the look on his face. <laughs> um, there is no more. Well, there's a. I don't know. That's, what is that? That's not even that's a, a few swig. Drops. That's a. Oh, Kobe pooped out there. Really? I can smell it coming through. The, no, that's her coffee. I always get them confused. <laughs> so. What? Uh, so let me guess. You don't like coffee? I don't. I do not like coffee mm. at all. I am not a coffee drinker. You give me some tea, we good to go. Coffee. Oh, you know, I'm with the teas. Don't yeah. act like you don't know about some tea. I know. It's worse now. Mm-hmm. It's a whole cabinet of it. Yeah, me too. But coffee, no, you can have it. Bustello. You can have it. I will. I mean, really. Bustello? I, you drink coffee, John? Hey, that B- Bustello. If you are um, drowsy, I never, I never put you as a coffee drinker. No, I'm just saying, just the smell of it will. Oh, okay. Wake you up. It's like ninety three high octane. Mm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm I don't. It's okay. I'll drink yours. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Cause when I'm nervous, really, <laughs> I drink coffee. I have a cup every single day in the morning. If the day gets a little stressful, I'll have another. So one. you're a real coffee drinker. Yeah, like I have. I buy the boxes of the K cups mm-hmm. on like the big fifty to a hundred boxes mm-hmm. with all the variety of flavors. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, hey, I'm not going to hold you to that. That's your thing. That's what you like doing. You still eat pork bacon. Like, we're never going to. All right. So, what we want to get into. (laughs) (laughs) But I appreciate turkey bacon. (sighs) Is that real bacon? It's real turkey. But it's not bacon. Okay. Look, the animal that you eat bacon from doesn't sweat. I'm not doing that with you. Man. But it's not bacon. It's okay. So what do you call it? What would you call it, Keith? Just turkey strips. Okay, well, it can be turkey strips then. I said it shouldn't be called bacon. It's terrible. I eat it from time to time. I got when I ain't got no bacon. Pork bacon, bacon but I'm belly? not going to say it. <laughs> it turkey belly? Turkey strips. John, what's that? In- <laughs> John is out of it. That, yeah, you see him on your chin. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's too early for us to be tipsy. Though. So <laughs> Netflix came out with a series called Untold, where they go and got it on my shirt. They look at different sports mm-hmm. events that happen or sports stories that people may not know about and get the untold real story of what happened. At that event. Yep, I just sobered up. <laughs> they start. <laughs> they started with one, the first one, and they're on episode three now. Um, they're little mini documentaries. Episode one Excuse me. was about the Malice in the Palace. Now, if you don't know what the Malice in the Palace is, Malice in the Palace was a big time brawl that broke out, first of its kind, at the NBA at an NBA game between the Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons. This was back on November 19th in 2004. And their fans. And, yeah, this happened at the Palace in Auburn Hills. That was the old arena for the Detroit Pistons. And at that time, Indiana Pacers really were pacing to be, um, pun intended, they were pacing to be the best team on the Eastern Conference going, look, really. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were headed for the, well, I don't know, because the Lakers were, Really, the best at that time. Stay on task. Yeah, they were the best. Cause what that, year did this happen? 2004. This is when they reloaded <laughs> with Gary Payton and Carl Malone on the Lakers. They had a pretty good run. They went to the finals. They got beat by the Pistons, which come, proves my point here. Um, So Pacers were on, on course for a very good year, hoping to get Reggie Miller 
one step closer to that championship ring. And so they had this game at the palace in Detroit and uh, a foul took place between a player on the Indian, the Pacers team named Ron Artest and Ben Wallace, who played for the Pistons. Ben Wallace took exception to the uh, foul. He pushed Ron Artest. Ron Artest went and laid on the scorer's bench. And as he laid there, a drink came, a cup came zooming down and hit him square in the face. He then uh, went into the stands to confront the fan. Violence ensued where the fans were fighting the players and came on the court, blah, blah, blah. The aftermath was plenty of suspensions. I believe Ron Artest was suspended for the whole year. Steven Jackson and Jermaine O'Neal were suspended for about 60 games, I believe. I think it was 25. 25. 25 was, um, 30 games. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was significant time. I it was significant, significant time. time. They were taken without away pay. without pay. Um, yeah. Ron Artest, he was given the suspension for, it was total of 86 games for Ron Artest, uh, which he lost uh, about $5 million. And they, a federal arbitrator upheld the full length of all suspensions except for Jermaine O'Neal, which was reduced to 15 games. And um, however, the NBA did appeal the decision of the arbitrator to reduce O'Neal's suspension in federal court. And a judge issued a temporary injunction allowing O'Neal to play until a full hearing was held on the NBA's appeal. Jermaine O'Neal played in two more games before an NBA case was brought before the U.S. District Court. And the NBA argued that under the terms of the collective bargaining agreement, Stern had absolute, David Stern was the commissioner at the time, he had absolute authority to hand out suspensions and hear appeals for all on-court incidents. But the judge ruled that because O'Neal's behavior was an off-court incident, arbitration was allowed under the CBA, and thus the arbitrator will send his rights to reduce the suspension. Despite O'Neill's successful appeal, no further appeals were made to reduce Artest and Jackson's suspension. So, and that's the one thing, right? How do you sit there? So, Stephen Jackson got 30 games. He lost $1.7 million. Jermaine O'Neill, he got 15 games. It was 25, but it went to 15. He lost $4.1 million. Ben Wallace got six games, 400000 Anthony Johnson from the Pacers got... Five games, Reggie Miller, one game. He wasn't even playing. Chauncey Billups, one game. Derek Coleman, one game. Eldon Campbell, one game. And David Harrison, none. These were the people that were involved. So the documentary really went into depth about this uh, brawl at the palace. From the media's perspective, and when you see the media perspective, of course, that's what you're watching on TV. And I remember this back then, actually watching a game live when it happened on ESPN. They pushed a narrative that, you know, it was the player's fault. When you watch the documentary, you see all these older white analysts, reporters get on there and they like to use their favorite code word. So they don't have to say the N word, which not just analysts, but Did they say thug? all of them. Yes. That, that's the code word to cover up for the N word. Whenever you hear someone that's not <laughs> black say thug and they're talking about black people, they're trying not to say the N word in public. I'm just going to put it out there. You may not agree. You may not like it, but it is the truth. Anytime, because if you look at anything that happens, it's always a thug that comes out. Whenever something happens, when it is someone from a uh, Middle Eastern background, they're terrorists. Whenever it is an Anglo-Saxon, as John likes to say, they had some type of mental issues growing up. Or was playful. Yes. So <clears throat> this occurred in the term that was thrown around from everybody, from lawyers to analysts, everybody was thug. For me... I'd rather you just come out and call me what you want to call me. Don't call me a thug. Just say what you want to say. I can respect that. that I think that's why I'm not trying to get too political here, but I am going to go down that. I think that's why I have more of a respect for Republicans than I do Democrats. Because with Republicans, 
their hoods are not on. The Democrats, the hoods are still on. Show me your face. Don't make it seem like you're on my side. You're not. Tell me how you really feel. Yeah, it's still recording. I'm just, I'm just watching the clock because this 30 minute rant is not going down today. So I'm just watching the clock. But listen. I know it's recording. I know you don't care. I, <laughs> I know this. Season one. Um, Point five. <laughs> so show me who you really are. So seeing these analysts cover this sport that is comprised of what, 85 to 90 percent black. You know what they're saying when they say thug. Okay. None of these educated black men, yes, educated because they had some type of education, are thugs. The definition of a thug does not fit the description of a professional athlete that has had to sacrifice their time and their life to perfect a craft that only a small population of people that play that sport is able to achieve on that level. That is not a thug. So say what you mean when you are saying, when you're calling names to these people, don't call them thugs. Just say they're typical, typical N words in my opinion. And they're just acting as how I believe they act. They will never say that. I'd rather they do. But they did. I, I hope someone grabs balls one day when something happens again, and there's an interview or an analyst that comes. Oh, they're being thugs. No, say what you but mean. If somebody, but we know that if somebody says the n word, they're gonna call forth an n word. Okay, because we know that a black person is not the definition of said word, right? Right. But we also know that it is a trigger for a lot of us. Yes. When it's said, class certain people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in this instance, we know that if they say that, they're trying to keep it safe but disrespectful. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like if a like, what would you have expected? Mm-hmm. Black people as a whole have been the most like just forgiving and docile and, you know, kumbaya for a long time. Too long. So how I don't understand how one would not expect someone to react in an, like, like this man, John Green, the person who started the issue started it. Yeah. When he knew that our test was already Next level, he's always been hot-headed. They've Mm -hmm. never been able to control him, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now he's disobedient. Now he's disrespectful. Now he's a loose cannon, and now he's all of these things. If you know this and you do something to trigger that, when somebody defends themselves, they're a thug, they're a gangster, they're an N-word, they're they're an animal, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you don't do anything, you're weak. You know, you have no spine. Right. So what do you expect? And I'm right. going to be very, very transparent. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of being docile. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I, I am saddened with the fact that they had to label these men who were defending themselves. But think about it. 30,000 against 12. Hmm. It's fight or flight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was my yeah my my. So you were a little pissed watching this documentary. Little, had you heard about this before? I had not. So this is your first time hearing about in my room cussing. Yeah, yeah. And then when you watch the interviews after of said, I want to call him the N word. Yeah. (laughs) When you watch the interviews, he's smiling. He's laughing. It's a joke, Mister Green, right? Yes. Mm It's amazing to me that the privilege Mm -hmm. is sickening, too. Well, they made it that way, too, right? The the league made it that way as well. They scapegoated the players. But they, if Mm -hmm. they don't have these particular types of players, the Steven Jacksons, the Reggie Millers, the 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 Artest, like the the O'Neills, like if you just think, okay, pull every alleged air quote thug out of basketball. What do you have? Mm. The NBA wouldn't we shit without these people. It wouldn't be NBA. Right. 
they say, oh, we play these players all this money. They need to do this. But yeah. They earn it. <laughs> but if you if they don't get paid, their managers, their coaches, their y'all they the don't owners, get paid. The water boys, nobody gets nobody paid. Nobody gets paid. So nobody comes to the just, arena. I was just a little I was I was a little um pissed. No, a lot of bit pissed off with the fact that they were trying to make this scene. It's always when a black person is defending themselves or they are standing for something other than, you know, the bullshit that people feed them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because, I mean, how many times is somebody going to piss on you and you say, if you don't say anything, they'll say you liked it. Mm-hmm. So I was very upset by the um, the way that they handled the situation, because these no these when these men get into the league, they taking care of whole families. Yeah. They taking care of generations. They're yeah. setting forth like the plan for their children. They mm-hmm. want to make that they want to, you know, generational wealth and things of that nature. And they sacrifice themselves. Look how long Reggie Miller played ball. Yeah. 18 seasons. Yeah. Right. 18. And that's that's a lot. Yeah. You know, and when you look at stuff like that, you say they tried to like in in <sighs> It's just sad that these people were basically protecting themselves. Mm-hmm. And truth be told, I will say that Mr. Artes is a loose cannon, right? Mm-hmm. But Think about everybody else who was involved. They got like penalty, major penalty. Is he is he a loose cannon or is he a person I just that operates with no fear? But wasn't that a I think okay, yes. And and yeah, for that, I am corrected. He is definitely a person that doesn't operate under anybody else's like rule. Mm-hmm. And and I have to respect that, honestly. Yeah. Because but you know, but it's like I just feel bad for like, like a loose Jermaine cannon O'Neal. to me. A loose cannon to me is someone that just uh, woke, wake up the next day and say, you know, I'm just going to go in and shoot up a church or shoot up a school. That's a loose cannon. I mean, but they don't. I mean, they don't more say than it's that. that, they say it's it's a disturbing uh, childhood. Yeah, or something was wrong. But that's that's a loose cannon in my opinion because that's a person that doesn't operate with any type of authority or care for anyone or any any regard for any life or anything. That's a, that's a loose cannon. I look at Ronald Tess as a person that says, hey, I'm not going to allow you to control yeah (laughs) you're not going to control me you know what i mean it's just you know i mean and i don't agree with all his movements in the in the sense because like when he went and did the award show instead of playing like stuff like that you know his teammates like little things like that i get but it's just it's just horrible because these men are that's what they do yeah like, I can't go and tell them how to play basketball. It's just like they can't come and tell me how to do what I do. That's right. You know, or I can't tell a doctor how to operate or a surgeon how to operate. I don't mm. know anything about that. But then the, the the disruption that happened in these people's lives, I feel like it was really unfair. Mm-hmm. I'm sobering up now, man. Woo. John, what you, John <laughs> let's let Mahogany cool off. What you got What you got from what you watched that? I, I, I will say this before you begin. The, the one thing that really was really telling for me was the the fat guy that came on the court and Jermaine O'Neal glanced with his punch, how he did an interview oh yeah, and was laughing about it. And then a few minutes later, he's on a, he's on a gurney, you know, a stretcher. A yeah. Yeah. He figured out after 30 seconds, oh yeah, my neck hurts. My yeah. neck hurts. So I'm suing. What, what was your, what was your, your thoughts? I think I was just about upset because at the time, uh, what was it, 2004, mm-hmm. I didn't evaluate the entire situation as far as how unsafe it was for the players. Mm-hmm. And then the media pundits who sit behind a desk and probably haven't done anything athletic in their entire lives, um, probably haven't been in a situation where they were, tra- were transgressed upon. Mm-hmm. And then to have the audacity to say, oh, you're not supposed to rush out to the stands. You're supposed to be professional. You're supposed to take whatever. You're I supposed give. to take whatever they give you. Yeah. Nah. Not recognizing the fact that they're men before they're damn basketball player. Mm-hmm. Their fathers, their sons. And then brothers. not having the, the 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 foresight to put themselves in that situation. What if it were you? Mm-hmm. What if it were you? After playing what, 47, 48, almost 48 minutes of basketball, the game's in hand, you have a little little scuffle. And they happen within the NBA. All the time. All the time. All the time. And to Ron Artest's credit, he was trying to calm himself down based on the supervision and and, and the guidance from his uh, psychologist. Mm-hmm. 
You lay go, down. Go, you lay down, mm-hmm. count to five. Yeah. And, and then, they found that offensive that he laid on the, like, they, they tried to say that he enticed it, you know, by laying on the score. He was removing himself. Yeah. He was removing himself from the area of transgression. Mm-hmm. And then him being at, you know, when he, within his, his, his trying to remain within peace, mm-hmm. the peace was disturbed when Mr. Green decided to transgress upon him and assault him with a, a, a cup of soda. Mm-hmm. Assault. Exactly. Assault. And that's exactly what took place. Cause all of this could have been avoided if he would have just kept that soda in his hands on his person. He threw rocks and then hit his hands too. Like when he came into the city, and then he, he moved was like, out the way. He, he, got, he moved out the way. He, he wasn't bold then when he saw that six, six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man come. Hmm. To seek retribution. Mm-hmm. And then he has the audacity to say, I wish I put my foot out sooner to trip him. Mm. Mm. And then for David Stern and, and the talking suits at the NBA to scapegoat the players. Yeah. And I understand the fans are the ones who are the that consume this product, but they have a huge level of culpability in all of this. Absolutely. I don't understand what they expected those 12 players and the ones that were not even suited up for that night to yeah. do Yeah. other than to defend themselves. I'm still trying to figure out how Reggie Miller got one game. I read that online. He didn't, I didn't do even see yeah, He, he didn't stepped anything. between one of the officials and the player and he was trying to explain it. So I guess the, the uh, aggression, because he had broken his finger, right? Yeah, he was out because yeah, he broke he his out. finger. But yeah, mm-hmm. like he, and it's just because he was there. Mm. He was black and he was there. Wow, yeah, there you go. And the cop even said, why are you here? And was ready Didn't know to, it was Reggie Miller. Didn't know who it was. Didn't yeah. know who he was and he was ready to pepper spray him. Yeah, yeah. And then, <sighs> I don't understand, you know, when you get accosted on the court. Now you're on the court. Mm-hmm. You're not in the stands anymore. You're in the court. Mm-hmm. And you accost a basketball player on our test on the court. Mm-hmm. And he's supposed to sit here and decipher, is he friend or is he, is he foe? Well, if he's on the court, he's a foe. Yeah. Because the kerfuffle that happened up in the... Uh, in the stands. So if you're in the court, you're fair game now. I have mm-hmm. to defend myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to snap on you first before you have a chance to snap on me. And thank God Jermaine O'Neal slipped. Yeah. And lost his footing because he would have killed that man. Yeah. With that punch. With that vicious right yeah. hand. Yeah. He, he was coming in full force. That's the one that ended up in the stretcher. So <laughs> they had... Um, it was all calculated. Bad. Yeah. So the aftermath for the fans... Uh, that happened, which was um, John Ackerman, John Green, Bryant Jackson, William Paulson, and also David Wallace, who was, was Ben Wallace's brother. They were charged with varying levels of assault and battery. Um, you know, they, they had many things happen to them. Uh, Bryant Jackson who had a prior criminal conviction was charged with felony assault for throwing a chair, which nearly hit Jermaine O'Neal during. Those are the thugs. Yeah. Um, two additional fans, Hadid and Shackleford, uh, were, were charged with trespassing as they entered the um, court during the fight. Brian Jackson pleaded no contest in 2005 to a felony assault charge for throwing a chair. Um, we also had, the big offender who started everything, Mr. Green, a jury found him guilty on one count of assault and battery for punching our tests in the stands, but acquitted him of an assault charge for throwing the cup. In 2006, a couple of months later in May, he was sentenced to 30 days in jail and two years probation. And then on November 7th, 2006, the Pistons, the Detroit Pistons issued a letter to Green informing him that he was banned for life from attending any Pistons home games under orders from the NBA. Although in a revision from his initial punishment two years prior, the ban no longer extended to other events at the Palace of Auburn Hills. So I wonder if that ban is still intact outside of the Palace because that has been destroyed. Like, is he just banned from Pistons games or was it banned from Auburn Hills games? You any know residual I mean? structure that has to do with Pistons games or any... any uh event outside of that he shouldn't be allowed i don't think he should be allowed in any arena but uh that's just me so he, he's he's the arbitrator well uh, uh the he, uh he's the source 
And, and what's he's so, the source of all this. He and, is. And none of this would have happened if he never throw that that cup. And I'm surprised he wasn't. Uh, uh, ch- well, he was charged, but he didn't. Uh, he ain't served no time. He served no time. Should have got somebody should have sued him. I, funny thing is, there was a hockey player that was there, uh, Chris Cellos. He attended the game with um, Kid Rock, and he said that the whole scene was unbelievable. Coming from a hockey player where they've had plenty of fights. Who are celebrated for those fights. Celebrated for those fights. Plenty of riots. Uh, you and never hear. celebrated for their brawls, too. So. Yeah. Never hear anything about, the, you know, they go into the stands, too. But you never hear anything about it. It's never made a big deal of. You never hear anyone being called a thug. And they beat each other to a bloody pulp. Actually, the referees let they it go until somebody, somebody falls. Yeah. But that's celebrated. But a man uh, defending himself, because he could have got seriously injured uh, with that cup being thrown. He's a thug. Malice in the Palace, uh, I I would recommend you to watch it. Just make sure that you have a full, you watch it on Friday, so you have a weekend to decompress before you go back to work. As you can see, it's been a couple of weeks since we all said we would watch it, and Mahogany is still fuming weeks later. I get mad when people bother my black men out here. Yes. Well, we appreciate you, Queen, for (laughs) having our back. So, (laughs) you know, it it messed up Jermaine O'Neal's career, that brawl. He never was really the same. Ron Artest, he, he rebounded from that one championship with the Lakers. Uh, Steven Jackson, you know, he's won a championship too. With the Spurs, right? Yeah. yeah. Spurs. He's had, he now has a career. He's a podcaster, I believe oh, now. He's dope. Yeah. He's so, so dope. A couple of people were able to rebound from it. Some were Reggie Miller retired without winning a championship. That was his second best shot because the short in the season, they had a good shot, but they lost to the Knicks, I think. And oh, well, one time they, they had a good shot against the Magic to when they went to the Eastern Conference Finals, but the Magic pulled through. You think he would have retired after 18 season if the kerfuffle at the uh, the Malice at the Palace? No. I think so. I, I think, think it was time for him. I think he was. It, that's a lot. You know, um, like Mahogany said, 18 years of that. So you're devoting, it's an 82 game season. So you're you're essentially devoting, what, about six, six to seven months? You're in the playoffs about nine months. Right. Then in the off season, you're training. Mm-hmm. So that's year in and year out. You're doing all these things and you're sacrificing your personal time, your family, friends, your life it's, to all of this. It's that's okay until you stop dancing to the beat of their drum. And then correct. It's the problem. Yeah. 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 All right. So song of the week. Let's get up out of here. What y'all got for song of the week? Who's first? I'll go first. You Only Live Twice by Drake, Lil Wayne, and the boss, Rick Ross. It's off of Drake's brand new album that touched down the other day. We'll get into that in a couple of weeks. I'm only 12 less. songs in. Um, I was listening to that on the way here this morning, so okay. I'll uh, I'll finish it up. Yeah, I got it. Well, that's towards the end, that song. Yeah. Okay. Um, you Only Live Twice off the Certified Lover Boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, albums. That's my, that's my song of the week. You, you, you'll see why when you listen to it. Okay. All right. What you got, John? I got uh, nobody by Nas and featuring Lauren Hill. Oh my God! Nobody. What a what a fire track, man. Okay. That's a fire track. I played that probably about five times over once I heard it. That's a fire track. And um, okay. I it was. <laughs> took me back mm-hmm. I know Lauren Hill was rapping this time but I forgot yeah you, 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 I, you. I just I, I don't know why I did I forgot to Miss Hill came with it yeah she did mm-hmm. okay yeah sorry <laughs> Mrs. Hill <laughs> mine is um, Get Off Me Ludacris <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Peter Pan. Get, yeah. Get off me. Whatever you Yeah. Get off me. Yeah. I like that song. I'm just, you know. Oh, that's from Back from the First Time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Back from the First Time. All right. Well, it has been a pleasure. Guys, thank you so much for the support. As you see, we have the new logo. How you guys feel about the new logo? <laughs> I'm in it. It doesn't <laughs> even matter. What do you mean? <laughs> Joe, how you feel about it? I like it, but my wife, she appreciates the uh, the first logo. The facial right. hair? Yeah. 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 She doesn't like the baby face look. <laughs> so are you going to grow it back? Or? She said it needs to be back by wintertime. Okay, so you should start now. Mm-hmm. It's not wintertime down Okay, here, right? but we what... We don't have a winner, so you got to figure it out. He could stretch his out to February because that's like the coldest month that we have here. I bet you his wife disagrees. Woo. I'm not getting into that I one. until December, basically. No, the yeah. countdown and is I'm on. I'm probably pushing it. So, Well, we're going we gonna to have a countdown. That's what we're going to do. I'm gonna mind she, my she, she said she wanted the original <laughs> one back, but mm. oh well. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue to download, support us as much as you can. I know that sometimes when listening, have you been listening to us for the past 32 episodes? Now it's like, hey, I'm just going to play them. But the more you hit download, the more it helps us, no matter what you listen to us on. Just hit that download button. If you can leave a review, if you're on Apple or on Google, if they have that option, Spotify, Listen Notes, um, any any platform that you listen to us on, please leave us a review that helps us. Again, download us. You have any questions, concerns, reach out to us at the short desk podcast at gmail.com. Also, we are on social media. We're on Instagram at short desk podcast, and we're on Facebook, short desk podcast, and we're on uh, Twitter, the short desk podcast, <laughs> everywhere you things. can find us, all of the things, <laughs> all of them. We're on that. I even post on my personal TikTok page some videos and stuff for the short desk podcast. So please follow us, listen, like, download, comment, continue to support. We are the short desk podcast. Holla at your boy. Shut up, fat boy. 